all stand together.
Uh, this is a really cool week for Bel Air Baptist Church. We are on mission this week. Uh, a lot of us are gone. Uh, we've got a group that just came back from Oklahoma, uh, which I think they had quite the adventure while they were gone. Uh, we've got a group that's in Brazil, and we've got a group that is in Arizona. So if you would, please uh, diligently pray for them this week. But right now, more importantly, we want to take a second and welcome our guests. If our guys would come forward. Uh, if you've never given us a record of your attendance before, uh, we'd like to do that. If you would, if you would take a look at your bulletin and on the back, there's a tab. If you would fill that out, whoop, tear it out, put in the offer and plate, we would appreciate that. And to help you do that, these guys have got a gift package to give you that includes a pen that will help you fill it out. So if this is your first time here, maybe your second, but you've never filled out one of these, if you would, would you slip your hand up in the air for just a second? We're not going to embarrass you or, or call you up to the front just yet. No, I'm just kidding. But if you would, just raise your hand for just a second. We'll get one of those to you. Anybody? Well, thank you all again for coming. If you are a visitor, we want you to feel at home and feel welcome. We're glad that y'all are here. Uh, for everybody else, we just uh, we want to worship the Lord. And we get to hear you preach tonight. So, well, oh, I'll speak tonight. Preach tonight. Okay. <laughs> Let's all stand. Thank you. 
I need you more. The choir is going to need the rest of the choir members to be with us. The choir did good. Everybody's in different places today. We want to be in prayer for them. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you, Lord, more than words can say. A lot of things have happened, you know, of uh, the group going to uh, uh, Oklahoma, you know, had a blowout on the tire. I don't know if you know about that. John, I'm glad you're okay. You see the damage on the front of the truck out there? He had a blowout, went into the medium, and tore up the tire and the, all the starters, so they had to replace a couple things, but they got it fixed. We got it connected. Our uh, Susie, our, our secretary, her husband is from the town that they broke down in over there in Texas. Amazing. So the, uh, there's a Methodist church there that helped us out and helped them do some things and stuff. They got all everything fixed. Keith Turner repaired everything. They got back on the road. It's delivered. They're back home. Uh, Tony, yesterday, they had a, a tire separate on the van. Uh, start coming apart, you know, where it vibrated and stuff. And they finally stopped at Walmart two hours after, before their destination. They repaired that, so they're there. So our team is over in Brazil this weekend, week, so there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of individuals that are hurting, needing, a lot of needs. So let's pray. Look around this morning uh, and see the empty seats. Part of our family is not with us, but part of our family is on the mission field. And we can rejoice for that. And you can rejoice that you are a part of it. And we do need you more every hour. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning uh, praising you for who you are. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that uh, you are the creator and sustainer of all things, Heavenly Father. And that we know, Heavenly Father, that there are those out there who would raise up their head to, to counteract the, the work that's going forward in your name, Heavenly Father. We know, Lord, that you are the overcomer of all things. We praise you for each one of those that are on the mission field right now, Heavenly Father that they've made their destination safely in spite of everything. We just pray that you would touch each one of us here. And we might continue to lift them up in prayer. And uh, how exciting it must be, Heavenly Father, for them to share the name of Jesus with someone who has never heard it before. They've heard it for the very first time, Heavenly Father. They're going to come back. They're going to be excited, Heavenly Father. They will be excited to wrap up the We just pray that you would be with us today, Heavenly Father, that you would anoint Brother D as he brings a message. Pour out your spirit, Father, that the, that the Holy Spirit can pick those in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing over me. I need you more.
Good morning. Glad you're here. If you will, turn in your Bibles with me to uh, Joshua chapter 24. We want to read a familiar passage of Scripture this morning. John, uh, Joshua 24, verses 14 through 17. And I know that this is quite often a passage of Scripture that is used for Father's Day messages, but I am not preaching the Father's Day message today, okay? And so if you'll turn with me that. I was not thinking about this week as I was preparing to ask myself, what in the world is, uh, is a good time for this? And so I got to think about it and I said, well, what about spiritual wisdom for intergenerational spiritual saliva? And I said, that would probably bring a lot of laughs. Thank you for that laughs. And then there was a shorter one that I thought about aging God. Aging God. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 17. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and truth. Put away the gods which your fathers served in the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served with, uh, served which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. And the people answered and, and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord God is He who brought us and our fathers up out of the land. Have you ever noticed how the normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill living of life wears us out? Have you ever thought about it in that terms? Just simply living life every day wears us out. We'll be a little bit older when we leave service today. It may not be but an hour and a half, but we'll be an hour and a half older. You know, that we will change somewhat. I told Mr. Dave the other day when he had come to the jail to teach one of the classes, he and I were talking about our aches and pains, and we were both in agreement that this getting old is not the season, is it? You know? Uh, okay, which part am I going to put on the, on the floor first today, or which can I get to move first? Some days growing old is okay, and some days it, it hurts a little bit more. It's not for citizens, is it? And yet, you and I know both that with the living of life, just the normal everyday routine, <laughs> comes that issue of aging. Now, we shouldn't be surprised at that if for no other reason than the fact that the Bible tells us uh, uh, something that David prayed. And he said, Lord, teach us to number our days. What was he saying there? I know we're getting old. I know time is moving on. But that's not all he said. And I think that is a portion of Scripture that quite often we forget. Why was the growing old important? And could it have a good meaning? According to David, it could. And it would. And it will because he didn't just say, Lord, teach us to number our days. But what he said there was that we may present to thee a heart of wisdom. I hope those of you who are even my elder, and I'm all 62, are wiser than I am. Through your life's experiences. And my hope is that fourth graders and seventh graders and third graders, as they live their life in a godly environment here in church and with their Christian families and their Christian friends, are going to grow godly and are going to age godly. Aging is a real part of life. 
life in. And as bad as we hate to admit it, Red Bond doesn't have the answer. Maybelline doesn't have, and Ola Ah, Oil of Olay doesn't have creams and potions enough to, to change that. There's not enough Botox anywhere on the face of the earth to lift all the crows and the crows and uh, what do you call crows feet and well, some of us have second crows feet. You know, all, you know what I'm talking about, you know. And there's not enough potion anywhere in the world to take all that away because we know that with aging comes wrinkles. <laughs> Folks, we are getting older, aren't we? We're older than we were two weeks ago when I stood in the same place. But what's happened in the last two weeks? My hope is that while we may have physically grown older, that we've also grown spiritually older. Because when, when there is a dual process here. There's the physical application and there's the spiritual application. And so often what happens, we know that as, age, as we age, sometimes we only age on the outside. And we don't age on the inside, or if I may, in our spirit. I was able to take this past week off and uh, just have a few days of vacation. And I really am glad that uh, I'm getting ready to go back to work today. Because I, I work less at the jail than I did on my honeydew list. <laughs> All this particular week, Ann and I painted. Don't ask me to raise that white arm, please, you know. It hurts. Uh, age has set in. We were out painting. We, you know, we just painted all week. But you know, this, I thought about something over the weekend. I said, you know, well, that that stuff that we painted might look fresh and new. It's still the same old stuff <coughs> that uh, was there before it got painted. The same old sheetrock, shape of the same old boards, the same old decking. The, the context didn't change. All we did is put a friendly smile on it. Boy, does us that look good. And hopefully it makes us feel a little better about ourselves. But you know, then that reminded me of an illustration that Jesus used when he was talking to the Sadducees and Pharisees. And he, he called those guys whitewashed. Offensive. He says, you pretend to be one thing on the outside, but on the inside, you're a totally different person. Yeah. And to some degree, that's what happens with us, brothers and sisters, when we age. It's the same old body. A few more aches and pain. My knees hurt a little worse today. I don't ask me to raise my right arm, you know, and that kind of thing. And yet, you see my breath back. And what we want to have happen, though, <clears throat> That in whatever of life's experiences we go through, as we go through that aging process, of whether those of us who are older getting a little older and our, our younger ones are, are getting older in terms of their growing up and maturing, we want to make sure that there's something that happens in here as much as on the outside. See, the only thing that changed about what Ann and I painted this week was the visible exterior. It was still the same old view. Our text has to do with the wear and tear of life. We had read that entire story. You know that our life had already caught up with good old Moses. He caught up with him a number of years ago. His life had flattened wore him out. Life was, had, had caught up with him. And he had died and he had been buried and he had been gone now for years. <laughs> but you know, if you go back and you look at Moses' life, when Moses died, he was a much different fellow than he was when he stood before God in the burning bush. We find the children of Israel before Joshua here. And Joshua is nearing the end of his life. According to verse 29, he will soon pass. 
And that's going to leave Israel at that point again when she must find a new leader. And so there were some decisions that have to be made, not only about choosing a leader, but decisions about what they're going to do as a nation continuing to grow up under the leadership of God. You know, when we grow old, our decisions change, don't we? Is it part A? Is it part Medicare part B? Or are we going to go with C, B, or C, S, F, or Z? I don't know how many they are now. I know they're growing daily. You know, there are choices that we have to make. I noticed this week that I didn't enjoy the pain as much as I used to because there was some pain involved. I couldn't quite do what I used to do. And I'm saying, wait a minute. Man, I'm too young for this still. Oh, geez, oh, my dear dreams. Got to have to make some decisions. Didn't Joshua was at the end of his life. And the time was coming for him <coughs> when he was going to pass from the scene. And we know from verse 29 that it says that he died and the servant of the, of the Lord died being 110 years old. Good land. I think about that. That's twice my age. Glory to Woo! <coughs> they buried him. Isn't that what they said about Moses? <laughs> they buried him. King David. How many of you have been to a funeral lately? Burials are still taking place on it. Because life is just the way it is. That's a good journey, it can't be. It's a good journey. I don't know if anybody today wants to, to get on that bus, even though we may be ready to be on the bus, prepared to be on the bus. Life is an enjoyable journey. I know it sounds like I'm rabbit, or I, I'm just you know, raving on but the issue <laughs> that I am trying to pinpoint for us at this point is this issue of legacy building. How are you and I going to be remembered by our families? What would our friends write on our tombstones? Most funerals now, you show up and they give you a bulletin and it has all kinds of information in I wonder what our bulletin will have in it as we come to that time when life catches up with us and, and the Lord calls us home. Is there going to be any statements made in there about us, not out of an egotistical need to be patted on the back, but a legacy that says, as he or she grew old physically, he or she never gave up on her or his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he grew and she grew. And folks were able to look and, and, and uh, see godliness in their lives and their decision making. And you know, friends, it doesn't matter whether or not we're 12 years old or 92 years old. If folks can see Jesus in us, that's what it's about, isn't it? Because it doesn't have to do with an age issue. But it does have something to do with the same thing that I talked about a couple of weeks ago when I was reminded us of what Paul said you and I as believers need to do is to grow up. And so with that age process of aging, that none of us like to talk about, comes this prime opportunity for us, brothers and sisters, to grow in Christ Jesus. Our text is where Joshua says, leadership, people, I'll talk to you. I've got some things that I've got to say to you today. There's some things that I can't let go by. They absolutely have to be, be said in order as a reminder of the decisions that you as a nation will make soon about who is going to be your leadership about who you're going to let God put in my place. 
Sounds like a good father, doesn't it? Sounds like a, a good pastor. <coughs> Sounds like a good deacon who, at regardless of what age, is saying, I need you to give you just a little bit more. Oh, brothers and sisters, you and I have got a lot more. And you know, my generation has failed to do something that I think is extremely important. How many of us have sat down with our grandparents and great-grandparents and listened to them tell the stories? <coughs> we haven't done a very good job of that, have we? And look at all the wisdom that has gone. I loved when Ann and I were in West Africa. We could see uh, an old white-headed, white-headed man. And we could call him old man. And it be a term of respect and honor because of his gray hair. Now, if I would call some of you here today, old woman or old man, you probably won't get over the case. In the African culture, it was a sign of respect because that it was a recognition that with aging came wisdom. Now, that doesn't mean there's not any young, wise, younger people. That's not what I'm saying. But as we grow in age, we got to grow in wisdom aside too, do Absolutely imperative. That's what happened to Joshua. Joshua very lovingly said, come on, folks, I need, I need to have a powwow with you. I need to talk with you about this future that you're facing. I know that my time is drawing nigh. And when he came to the table with them, he came with a commanding presence. He brought a compassionate plea to his people about what their future would be. Moms and dads, grandmoms and granddaddies, aunts and uncles, good godly neighbors, Sunday school teachers, we have a younger generation to whom we must set a legacy that reflects Jesus Christ. And we have to do it in our generation now. Yeah. Because if we don't do it now, there's not going to be another generation to do it. We can't skip a generation and expect that next generation to pick it up and move it forward because there's not going to be that other generation at that point if we skip a generation. We have an intergenerational responsibility of helping our children and our grandchildren and our young people and folks we love and care about know that as they get older and as the crow's feet set in and as the wrinkles set in and as the, the beauty of, of, what do you call it? Love handles, that's what I'm talking about. The beauty of love handles that come with age. has got to come the maturity that is in here. He said to them, you need to begin to think about who you are. You need to begin to remember who you belong to. You've got to remember what your past history has been, where God graciously brought you out of, brought you out of uh, captivity, and He set you free. If that didn't bring spiritual maturity, what else is going to take to bring the maturity? He said it won't be long before you bury it. But you've got some decisions that you've got to make. If there's some decisions that you've got to make. And I want to challenge you to think about it. You see, the whole issue that Joshua's talking about here is the issues of responsibility and accountability. Responsibility and accountability. And a part of that for Joshua was his absolute determination.
nation to gather his people again for one more time and say to them, don't forget. Don't forget the past, where you've been. Don't forget where you are. Don't close a blind eye where you're going to be in the future as you let God lead you and guide you. He's talking about growing old, not just great graciously, but he's talking about growing old godly. You know, if we grow old godly, it will be gracious for us. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be there. Joshua had a decision to make. And his decision was he felt obligated one more time to remind his people of what they were about. He had some things he had to say. And he was not willing to go to his grave without having said those first. If I would ask you today, are there some things that you have that you would love to say to some of your family or your relatives or your good friends that have to do with spiritual issues, maturing in Christ? Most of us would probably raise your hand too. What is the most important thing that you and I can say? to folks that we love. Think about that. We ought to be saying to them that God loves them far better than we and far more than we do. But He empowers us. We ought to be able to say to them, because I love you, there's some things that I need to share with you. When my daughters left home they got married, went off to school or whatever. I sat down and I wrote letters to both of my daughters. One last opportunity for Daddy to get the last word. And see, it was a letter. He got the letter too late to come back at me before the event. I learned that from jail. <laughs> and in those letters I said, don't forget your faith. Don't forget your relationship with God. Yeah. Live out what you have seen evidenced in your home and in your growing up. Live out what you've been taught. See, my girls were the disadvantage in that they had to put up with me as their pastor for 20-something years. Man, wasn't that a cruel and unusual punishment? <laughs> so if anything goes wrong, I reckon that I have to take credit for it. Okay? Oh, I had no Think about Some of those things that are so deeply important and embedded in your spirit that you're not going to be able to rest at night until you sit down and say that to them or write them. They are things that have to be said. I don't know what I'll face when I get back to the jail. They've been off all week. I know we've got 838 inmates out there today, so... It's no telling what I'll find. I do know that one family in the later days will need to be told that God loves them as they give the full grief in it. Joshua loved his people. He said, I'm old. And as you see me age, you're getting older too. Getting older. I saw a young lady who passed our loss for a number of years. Uh, Harvey recognized her this, this week when I went to the store. She walked up and my neck. She's up here about this tall now. And I had to do a double take to recognize who the young lady was. <coughs> but she recognized me. And I appreciated that. And then we got the jabber jaw a little bit, you know. I told her, I said, you should grow up. I mean, I'm old. She got to. But folks, that is the truth. We're already an hour older than we were when we got 
didn't come from the outside. <laughs> but they came from the head. The principle where Jesus said what the files a man doesn't come from the outside but from the inside also makes application of what we are on the inside spiritually eventually comes out in our decision and our choice making days. And who more than our families today, men, need to see godliness in our age? Not just the fact that we have, well, some of us have, have some of y'all have, have, and some of us decided to use Roundup. Uh, you know, some of you have hair that is gray. Some of you have hair that's gray that only your hairdresser knows about. Okay? That kind of thing. I could paint that piece of plywood until I could drop and have 42 inches of, of paint on that. But it's the same piece of plywood when it didn't have a single coat of paint on it. There may be some decisions that you and I need to make in relationship with our families as Joshua felt compelled to make about his family and his people. You know, the interesting thing about Joshua's decision was that when he confronted his people lovingly and compassionately, he confronted them with the same issue that he had already been faced with in Satan. Birds of a feather flock, flock together on the same goes. That's not what we're talking about here. But we're talking about a, a godly leader who recognized that his responsibility was to say to his flock, those that God had put him to lead, you need to make decisions today about your relationship with Jesus Christ, with God your Father, because there's coming a time where you're going to drag my carcass to the cemetery. And it's not about me, but it is about your personal relationship with God. Agree? Wouldn't you think so? You know why he's saying that? I had to make the decision today to come and to meet with you and confront you about this. But now you've been confronted and now your task is to make the same decision about what you're going to do in your own life. It was a decision that was going to have consequences. He said to them, you know, you can go ahead and do what your forefathers had done and live like they did in the wilderness. And I want to tell you, God's going to spew you out of his mouth. That's my translation here, okay? You're going to destroy your relationship with God in the years ahead of growing old physically. If you ought to do what you have done, our forefathers have done in the past. Who, who is it that describe or defines insanity as doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different, the same way but expecting different results? Sometimes growing old feels like that, doesn't it? There were going to be consequences. And the thing is, according to verse 15, it was a decision that was a personal decision. It was a decision that I put each individual to make. You and I grow old on our own. We don't need anybody to tell us, don't we? We don't need any instructions. We do that really good. Sounds like I'm be beating aging up today. But it is a glorious thing, isn't it? Good gracious, just think. We'll be an hour and a half close to heaven by the time we finish the Amen. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, brothers and sisters, aging gracefully and, and aging godly honors God. And that's what I believe 
we see taking place here in Joshua's interaction with people that he loved. I believe we see the heart of a real pastor here. I believe we see the heart of a very loving father here who has said, I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to leave a legacy that they will want to remember. We're talking about an intergenerational accountability. There are some of you here that are very young. Comes one right in the corner of that. It's very, very young. No, Dad, not you. <laughs> and I look and I see some of my senior adult <coughs> brothers and sisters here that are even more elderly than myself. And somewhere there's good stuff taking place in all of those ages. But you know who makes the difference in the age? The Lord. It's all about Him. What kind of legacy are we leaving? How are we going to be remembered? What are people going to write on our tombstones? Not an egotistical thing by any stretch of imagination. But how are we going to be remembered? Are we growing wiser out here as we grow older out here? If we're not, maybe something wrong. There may be some misplaced priorities. There may be some issues that we need to deal with swap that. As we grow older, we all go to be growing and mature. Pray with me, please. Father, as we come to that time of the service this morning, we just want to give folks an opportunity to deal with you. I just pray that you would move in our presence today. Father, we cannot change what I owe about growing old. Oh, we can buy a little more Maybelline or, or Neutrogena. We can eat a few more healthy foods. We can join the uh, Planet Fitness. We can jog or, or whatever. And yet it's still not going to change the fact that we get getting old. But we can do something about the legacy that there is something we can do to make sure that as we grow older physically, that our legacy grows bolder and stronger and more godly and reflective of the one who is life itself, both physically and spiritually. If there are those here today who do not know you, Father, they are already dead according to Paul in Ephesians. <coughs> They're dead on the inside. They're dead in their spirits and their hearts because of the presence of sin. Because we know that the Word says that sin leads to death. They need to be renewed. They need to be resurrected. Father, before revival can come, there's got to be a resurrection. You can't renew. You can't, you can't renew what's already dead. God first make it alive. May that happen this morning. Father, I may have brothers and sisters in this place this morning. Who deep down in their hearts do not have comfort and peace about facing the future. Fearful of death. Filled with doubt and worry. Concerned about eternity, unsure. Lord, I pray that you would deal with them as well, right? Very lovingly and gently speak to their hearts. Father, we're before you now. Help us in our time of decision making. Of course, in your name we pray. Stand for your sake.